OK slash K slash Amandos I want all your spoopy green texts drop that involve Goatman, Wendigos, Flesh Gates, and Skinwalkers. Forest Devils are good too. I'll provide you with an actual first-hand account. Though I don't know whether it was a Wendigo I definitely came across something unnatural. Be me in 2011. Living in a town called Sierra Vista on the southern border of Arizona. Our county was hit extremely hard by a massive forest fire known as the Monument Fire caused by illegal immigrants trying to jump the border through the mountains range. The fires they lit burned away almost 11,000 acres, killed numerous people, and burnt down hundreds of homes. Being 19 I decide to volunteer with the fire rescue teams to go clear homes in the mountains to ensure that no people are left behind. We worked in pairs and cleared dozens of cabins and homes over the course of our first day. My partner and I the following dawn were tasked with going to a known bed and breakfast in Ramsey Canyon that was directly in the path of the fire. My partner being in his late 60s wasn't the most capable, but he was a prior Signal Corps guy in the Army during Vietnam and ran our comms. As we approached the bed and breakfast the light of dawn was still just barely peeking through the trees most of the illumination came from the fire approximately 5,000 feet above us. Being that the trail was quite rocky and the road up to the BNB was blocked off I told my partner I'd go check it out by myself, but I kept my radio on me for safety purposes. As I'm walking the trail ash could be seen raining down like snow. And animals could be seen frantically running all around trying to escape the impending doom that was 100 foot tall infernos that turned trees into matchsticks. I reached the BNB after about 10 minutes. It was two stories tall and had just over eight rooms and a lobby. The door to the front of the building was wide open and inside the main lobby it was filled with dozens of crows attempting to find cover. As I walk in they all screech out and flap wildly trying to leave slamming into walls trying to find an exit. The thunderous noise caused something upstairs to stir and run out of a room. The noise didn't sound like the paws of a coyote nor the feet of a person it was loud and gave of almost an almost rhythmic thumping. Worried it may be a bear I decide to radio my partner and tell him what I'm hearing. He quickly suggests I come back and bring a 30 to 30 he had stowed away in his truck. I remember the feeling of walking back down the trail alone and feeling exposed constantly looking over my shoulder wondering if a cougar or black bear was watching me from a distance. My pace quickened and eventually turned into a light jog doing my best to safely get down the trail back to the truck. Finally reaching the truck I pulled the Winchester 94 from its case and slung it over my shoulder then proceeded to walk back up the trail. By this time we were already getting calls to go elsewhere. We both decided the right thing to do was complete the search before moving on in case someone was upstairs or in a guest house immobilized. After reaching the inn once more I unslung the rifle and cautiously moved up the stairs. The wood constantly creaked probably no louder than any old set of stairs, but to me it sounded like bombs going off. I called out for anyone who might be trapped, but got no response. As I moved up most of the doors were locked apart from one that was almost completely off its hinge. Peeking inside I could see that the room had been torn apart with the dresser slumped over against the ground and the mattress hanging off the bed but still the room was empty. Now with a bit of confidence I felt as if whatever was in the second floor room must have been surely scared off by my presence. I continued to the outskirts of the property to a small guest house that was nestled near a creek, but that's when my nerves were broken once more. I heard a screaming noise almost like that of a person having their life taken from them violently coming from behind a guest house. Instantly I radio back to my partner and explain what I'm witnessing so that he can contact property chains in case someone is injured. Quickly running up I notice the guest house door is wide open as are the windows. The ash that had been raining down had filled the room inside the guest house leaving a few millimeters of dark gray ash covering the floor. In the ash very clear prints could be made out. Coyote. Wild birds. Then there was something else. 
not quite paw prints, but most definitely not human prints as they were four-toed and approximately the size of a large grapefruit very clearly pointed however towards the toes. At this point thoughts are racing through my head of large animals nearby likely watching my movements from a distance. As I step out of the cabin however I see nothing. I decide to complete the search by walking along the stream for a few hundred yards towards the noise I had heard. There was an acrid smell in the air like burning hair and decay. As I walk my last 50 yards or so I can see something in a grassy patch. Moving closer I see it's a dead mule deer, but it hadn't been killed by a bear or mountain lion as they tend to go for the neck. Instead the deer looked as though it had been nearly disemboweled with a massive gash over the stomach cavity. Nothing had been eaten which was unusual leading me to believe my presence had disturbed whatever was planning to consume it. I instantly froze having heard bushes rustling to my right just across the creek about 20 yards away. Off trotted a grey furred animal on all fours, the way it ran almost reminded me of a galloping horse, but far less grace and speed. The animal had a tight almost malnourished look with long dog-like feet, but it was very obviously no wild dog. It was far too large. I very quickly in an almost instinctual fashion decide to hoof it back to the truck. Upon getting back I tell my partner everything I saw and heard so that we can file a report. When I ask him for an explanation he simply told me it was likely a wild cat. To this day I still have no explanation for the thing I saw or the way the carcass of the mule deer was mutilated. I'm sure if someone was able to find search up the old reports from the monument fire mine would be in there for the Ramsey Canyon location. I wish I still had it myself. Be in a California. Bought some NVG and decided to go night hunting. Spend the night getting used to stalking and handling the fob. Notice a bit ahead of me a campfire and the faint sounds of music. Sounds like a group of campers are having fun. Jason Voorhees.jpg Slowly creep up to a group of hipsters drinking and getting high around some tents. NVG are straining against the campfire. Notice a strange humanoid creature skulking along the opposite edge of the camp, unseen by the campers. It waves at me and motions me to meet around the back part of the camp. I figure I have nothing to lose, and I have a gun, so I nod and meet the thing on the other side. Turns out it's not a skinwalker, just some serial killer who eats people. Disappoint.png Guy asks if I want to help him kill and rape the campers. Politely decline because I don't like doing that around strangers. He understands and asks if I just want to scare them off and steal their shit. I agree to that so long as we get to make it look like a cult. He smiles and we shake hands. Guy circles back around motions to me when he's ready. I yell and take a few shots at the campfire. Campers freak out and scatter into the darkness. Guy jumps out at one of the couples and the male camper pushes his GF at him and runs away. Guy grabs her and wrestles her to the ground. Asks me to help him cuff and gag her. She thrashes about a bit but he hits her a few times and knocks her out. We begin searching the camp and find just some alcohol and some weed and shrooms. I find a wallet and some cash. We divide up the cash and I take a little weed for my trip back through the woods. Guy asks me again if I wanted to join in and I just decline while spraying symbols on the trees and slashing up some of the tents. Guy shrugs and thanks me, picks up the girl, and wanders off into the darkness. I douse out the fire, start up the nods, and take the long trek back to my hidden vehicle, carefully avoiding the lost campers. November 2018, taking my 7-year-old son camping for the weekend in Southern VA. First day nothing special, campfire dinners and ghost stories until the sun goes down. Making s'mores above the last few hot coals before tucking in. See some clouds roll in out of nowhere and decide to put the rain cover on the tent. Starts raining like crazy as soon as we tuck in. 
Rain on the tent is so loud it's keeping us awake and we have to shout to talk. We've been through this once before so he's not really worried just tired and grumpy. Hear a grinding noise over the drumming rain, then an arrhythmic thumping. Must be loud or close but it's impossible to pinpoint with the deafening noise. After 20 to 30 minutes the rain subsided but can still hear the thumping. Zip the door open and peer out with the flashlight. Can't see shit as it a little misty slash foggy now. Just try to ignore it as it slows and eventually stops. Get up at first light and start a fire with some dry logs from the truck. Boy decides to wander around a little. Hear him scream loud, not a normal play scream but a terrified real scream and I run towards the noise. See him running back toward me, pointing behind him at the tree line. Dad. Dad. In the. In the tree. What is it? He points again. Take a few paces toward the tree line and I can make out a tan object in a tree way up. Get closer and tell him to stay close. It's a fucking deer. In a fucking tree. No rope, no tackle, just hanging by the antlers in a branch 15 up, no blood or any damage I can see. Dad can we get it down? Is it okay? Back truck up and climb on the calf to get the dead deer down from the tree. No sign of gunshot wood or anything. Decide to dump it from the truck a mile or so from camp as I'm creeped out and don't want to see what's inside or clean it to eat. I'm not in a good mood and want to leave, ask son if he wants to go home or find somewhere else to camp. He says he likes this spot since we can fish all day, and it's not supposed to rain this night so nothing weird should happen. So we stay, spend the day reading books, playing checkers, and fishing cooking hot dogs and two tiny fish over the fire for dinner. Coals are going out and the moon disappears behind the first dark clouds we've seen all day. Put the rain cover back on and tuck in. Maybe an hour after he falls asleep I'm stressed, still wide awake the rain starts. It's not as hard as last night but still enough to wake him up. Dad I hear it again. I pull him close to my sleeping bag with me and clench my shotgun tight. Grinding. Like two logs being dragged against each other. What's that? I wanna see. Before I can argue he's got the flashlight and is zipping down the door to peer outside. Rays from the flashlight scattered by the rain hit the tree line and the sound stops. Don't go outside son. Okay, can I look out this side? He unzips the back window cover of the tent and lifts the rain fly up. The flashlight doesn't illuminate much other than the rain drops right in front of us so he closes it. After a few minutes the rain slows and the sound comes back. He again unzips the tent door and leans out with the flashlight. In a blink I see a blur of darkness as the flashlight flips from his hand and he flies out of the tent as if yanked up and away like a movie stunt. He screams and I scramble to my feet, tripping and falling out of the tent onto the soggy grass with shotgun and flashlight in hand. Searching with the narrow beam of light towards his scream I see a jagged mass of something, shadowy and brown moving quickly toward the tree line. I run fast as my legs will carry me toward the trees, steadying the light on the object. It's much larger than I am, maybe similar in profile to a bear on its hind legs but moving much too fast. He screams again as they approach the tree line. 40 paces from me and 20 paces from the forest. Refusing to let him go into the darkness without a fight, I try to line up the beat of my shotgun just above the shape and fire four rounds of bird shot without slowing my run. Another gut-wrenching scream. Bringing the flashlight back up and scanning at full sprint I find my son rolled into the tall wet grass maybe 20 yards past the first line of trees with his hands over his ears. I force my eyes wide open staring into the beam light against cold black night, swivel back and forth, barrel raised and see nothing but trees. Hands shaking I sling the gun and throw my boy over my shoulder. Run back to the truck, get the fuck back to the road with the gas pedal on the floor. 
Son is bleeding from two spots on his leg. Find out later I got him with some bird shot, but he cleaned up okay. We never went back for the tent or our stuff. He's still going to counseling and has nightmares but can't recall anything physically about the big brown thing other than. It felt like a wicker chair grabbed me all over.